Good day, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about data collection and quantitative research. I'm Dr. Chanel Concepcion from Silliman University College of Nursing. So when we talk about data collection, especially in quantitative research, this is highly structured. And the goal, of course, is to achieve consistency for each variable. And as much as possible, we want to eliminate bias in how we collect the data. And of course, we have to get our, ready, our data ready to facilitate analysis. So today we'll talk about developing a data collection plan and the data collection methods and instruments. Um, we will just have an overview about this. At the in-depth, you can see it in your notes and in the PDF file that you will receive in your virtual classroom and implementing a data collection plan. So let's begin with developing a data collection plan. So these are essentially the main steps when you plan for a data collection. First, you need to identify the need. What is it that you really want to achieve in your study? And what are the kinds of data that you would want to collect so you will have to also align it with your research question. And then you have to think about how do I get to know how to measure the variables or how to measure what I intend to measure. So you have to select the measure. And then after that, you have to think about maybe selecting an instrument. Or if you do not find any instrument, you will have to develop the instrument to collect the data. And after you have the instrument, you pre-test the instrument and start a data collection package. And after that, you have to develop the data collection forms and procedures that would facilitate your collection of the data. So let's look at it one. So the first step in planning your data collection is to identify the need. You have to determine what are the purpose for needing the data is there a hypothesis that you want to test? Um, of course, we all need to address the research question that's very fundamental in all um, research project or research um, undertaking. We also need to describe the sample. That's why we need to collect data. We also need to control confounding variables. And this is very important in quantitative research because we wanted to eliminate all biases. And then understand subgroup effects, assess treatment fidelity, we also need to look at the cost, especially if we're looking at financial aspect of our, of our research, and also document administrative features, for example, contact addresses and things like that that's important in the research study. The second step is selecting types of measures. So you have your variables, you are able to identify your variables. The next thing you have to think about is how do I measure or make sure that these variables are operationalized and measured? So what instruments will you use? Would you need a self-report instrument, an observation, biomarkers, physical performance test, or maybe you need some records? We will talk about this later on in this uh, discussion. The next step is selecting and developing instruments. First is you need to look around in the literature or in the webs, in, in the internet, if there are instruments to measure the variables that you're interested to study. Okay, so let's just say, for example, you wanted to look at um, measuring caring in nursing. So there are so many um, researchers out there and some instruments that have already been validated. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You just have to use that instrument, make sure that it fits your study. And the most important thing is to ask permission from the author, okay? If it's a public domain, for example, these are government-owned um, websites or government-owned uh, researchers, most of them are free to use. And there are also authors that really indicate that this is free to use as long as you cite the authors. So it's okay to use. However, if you're not sure, you always have to err on the safe side and you have to ask permission. Okay, so 
if there's really no instrument that you can find out there, you may need to develop that instrument, but this is your last resort, okay? The key question that you have to ask now when you're looking at instruments, does the instrument correspond to the conceptual definition of the variable? Will the instrument yield high quality data? So these are important things that you need to ask yourself. The next step is pre-testing the data collection. So if you have found instruments there, it's still a good practice to test the instruments for you know, how long it will take, what are some of the challenges that you face. And if it's, uh, it's, all, it's something that you developed, the more you need to test it. Okay, maybe test it in 10 to 15 people. Um, that is a recommendation by, by Pollen and Beck. And then you note and see how long does it take for a respondent to answer the instrument? What are the difficulties and challenges when they answer? And maybe you can see how do I train those who would be collecting the data? What are the training needs? What are the areas that you can still fine tune so that you will have a smooth data collection process? And what is the data yielding? Would that be quality? Is this really what you need so that you will answer your research questions and you can come into certain conclusions? So these are things that you need to do. The next step is to develop data collection forms and procedures. So the instrument itself is, is not enough. You have to look at the bigger picture and say, how do I make sure that when all of these uh, data collection plan that I have, it will go smoothly? Maybe you need to have screening tools. For example, you're looking at uh, patients with diabetes and your eligibility criteria says that they should be diabetic for at least, uh, or diagnosed to have diabetes for at least three years, for example. So you cannot just give them the instrument without screening them at first because that's a waste of your time and the waste of their time. So you need to have screening tools. And in part, as part of the ethics, we need to have informed consents for our participants, for our respondents. Maybe you would also need to get the contact information so that if there are things that you need to probably ask after the data collection process, you can contact your respondents. Maybe demographic data would be needed, okay? And also you need to test your data collection protocols. This will make your data collection plan go smoothly. So now let's talk about data collection methods and instruments. In this discussion, I will not really go into details. You need to read uh, Pollitt and Beck 11th edition for more details on this, but I'll just give you an overview. So there's, there are different methods and instruments. One is the structured self-report instrument. Um, one example of this is the interview schedule. The interview schedule is usually a structured interview. Um, usually it's used by the researcher asking questions. Maybe you have probably um, uh, heard about like, for example, surveys that are really structured. So the researcher needs to ask the question. And so that's what you call an interview schedule. If it's a questionnaire, usually it's the respondent who would be answering these questions. For example, our Likert scale. Likert scale would be, for example, um, zero to 10. Zero is probably no pain, and uh, 10 would be the worst pain you've ever had. So this is what you call a 10-point Likert scale. It could be a five-point Likert scale or a three-point Likert scale. The other one is a structured observation. So um, you record the behaviors, interactions, events in a systematic way. So this needs to have some sort of formal instrument and protocol, such as your rating scale. So when you're observing something, you would be able to rate it accordingly so that you will maintain objectivity in your data collection. Now, biomarkers, these is very uh, important, especially in health researches. Um, this uh, biomarkers is defined as characteristic that is objectively measured and evaluated as indicator of normal biological process, pathogenic processes, or pharmacological response to a therapeutic intervention. For example, your blood pressure or your lab results. There are two types. The in vivo measure, which is performed in living organisms, such as the blood pressure. So you need to, to um, 
uh, have a living or person to get the blood pressure. And the in vitro is performed outside the organism's body, like a lab test. You need to send it to the laboratory to be examined. Other data collection methods is, for example, a physical performance test. You're measuring the patient's ability and skill, just for example, a six minute walk test or other uh, instruments that would collect certain data performances. Data extracted from the records could be from paper or electronic sources. For example, you're looking at the nursing documentation. So you can look at the um, electronic medical record and extract that data so that you can use it for analysis. Now, implementing a data collection plan, how do we do that? Data collection plan, there's a lot of considerations that you have to think about. Um, you have to train the research personnel, especially if it's a huge um, research. In my experience, when I was in Dallas Hall University, we had a huge research funded by the USAID. Most of the time, our uh, principal investigator would uh, be part of a data collection, but sometimes because it's a huge multi-site research, we would need to have training among us who are research assistant so that we can have, we are in the same page when we collect the data. And sometimes, even though you're part of the, uh, of the research team, you also need to have enumerators or data collectors. And you need to make sure that they know how to implement the, the study or research protocol. So you need to train them. There should be a training manual. And sometimes you have to conduct mock interviews to make sure that um, the research protocols or data collection protocols are followed. The 11th edition of Nursing Research by Paulette and Beck lists some guidelines for critically appraising data collection plan in conducting quantitative studies. So I do not need to go one by one, but these are very important questions that you could ask yourself to ensure that you have a high quality data collection um, protocols and to make sure that you get the data that you need so that you can also have quality analysis of your data. So if you have questions about this, do not hesitate to email me. Thank you very much.